Good morning, this is Will Faber from Art to Ride, and I'm here with Bailador this morning. And we're going to do a little update on him, but I also wanted to talk a little bit about um, what, I, what we might call the second phase of lunging. This horse has been working with him for about six weeks now, something like that. And when he came, he was a very spooky horse. He had learned, he was very sore in his back, and he'd learned to come out and just spook at every little noise and every little thing that moved, you know, and just one of these horses you couldn't get his attention, and he was never what we call like sort of getting in the zone. So after about six weeks of work with him, he's now starting to come out and get there much quickly. The first time I worked with this horse on the lunge line, it took me probably very much near an hour, a full hour, just to get him to stretch and, and relax at all. And, and in the beginning, we talk about lunging. Um, most horses are very, you know, they come out of the stall, they're ready to go. And I talk about that in our previous one. So I never try to make a horse walk if they don't want to. Just get them moving in the trot and just allowing them to stretch down. The first thing that we want to do in lunging is to, is to teach the horse to move away from the whip and move out to the contact with the line, just like when we ride. Um, when we're lunging, it's just the same as riding, except the whip now is your leg, and of course you have contact with your rein, and we want to teach the horse to move out into that contact so that he will then bend to the inside. That's why we talk about the side reins always being the same length, so that when we see the horse beginning to bend, the inside rein should be loose which will tell you the horse is bending. That's why we never want to tighten one side rein, the inside rein, more than the outside, because that will teach the horse actually to hang on the inside rein rather than to relax to it. So always having the reins the same length on both sides. So I want to show you this horse has gotten to a point now where he will come out and relax quite quickly. And uh, because I can move him into the outside rein, I can allow him to do some work in the walk, and he doesn't have that thing of he wants to just take off immediately. Once they begin to get in the zone, they won't be so, now that's not to say if they come out fresh a couple of days off, they're certainly probably gonna wanna move. And same thing there, I'm not gonna try to force them to, uh, to stay in a walk if I, if I can't keep them there relatively easily. But a horse like this is actually, even though he's learned to spook and was quite high and would do all these things, he's, he's really quite a, a lazy horse by nature. So once we begin to train them correctly, they start relaxing and then we don't see all the problems that we have um, with them before they begin to work over their back. So once again, so now I can pretty much start off the walk with this one, which is what we'll do today. So if we can get them to stretch into the contact of the walk, we would like that to happen. Like you see him doing here now. So already just at the walk, this would have taken an hour six weeks ago just to get him just even to relax. Now you see he's coming out in the walk and beginning already to stretch down into the contact. And because I've taught him correctly, that is I've taught him to move away from the whip, I can move him out on the circle like that. Note that I'm always maintaining contact. But how nicely he's already stretching down into the contact just right off the bat. Like that. So I can let him start at a walk and just stretch deeply into the contact like that. Now you'll notice over here there's a little building over here besides, which is where we keep our... Uh, machine that does the ring here, and uh, there, this environment um, compared to his home environment is much quieter. There's not so many things for him to spook at. So he had taken up as this little tent over here being the number one thing he was putting all his energies into spooking at. But if you notice now, he's walking by it, and you couldn't even, even a couple of weeks ago, he wouldn't even walk by this thing without throwing his head straight in the air and hollowing. And you can see him still reacting a little bit, wanting to look over there a little bit. But he comes right back and relaxes back into the contact again. Very nice, like that. So what a lovely walk. So when they get to this point where they will walk when you start out, by all means you can work them in the walk. Just don't ever try to force a horse to walk. It doesn't do any good. But when they get to the point where they start wanting to and they're relaxed, then of course we can start to walk to our advantage. Like that. Nice stretch in the walk. Beautiful, just like that. So for the sake of expediency, I'm going to go on into the trot now. This is about what I'd like you to do. 
if I were out here without running a camera, I'd probably let him walk a little bit longer. But this is getting very nice. He's stretching into that contact quite nicely. So he's certainly ready to move up into the truck. And two up. Now notice when he started off in the canter there, I didn't make a big thing about that. In fact, I let him canter a little bit rather than try to jerk on him and force him right back to the trot. I never want to do that. Notice that these side reins are such a length that they're not at all holding his head down in any way. He just can't get his head all the way up. Once again, that's how correct side range should be done. And drop. And once again, you notice when he did that little canter thing there, I didn't immediately just jerk on him and try to make him come immediately back. I let him canter on a little bit. A few strides and then come back to it. There we go. But when I started this horse, when he would lunge, he was uh, quite a barn sour horse. He was always looking to go back to the barn. So every time he'd come around the corner there by the barn or when he was uh, at his home stable where he lived, he'd do the same thing. Every time he'd come back in the direction of where his, his stable is, he'd have a little fit and throw his head up in the air and hollow. So what we're beginning to see now is him beginning to get in the zone, so to speak. That place where they get to where they forget about everything and just relax into the contact. And what used to take us 45 minutes to get him just to stretch down, we're seeing that happening within a couple of moments. Now he's a horse who canters better than he trots, really. So it's kind of okay there, instead of trying to jerk him back to the trot, once again, I'm just gonna send him on in the canter. So he doesn't think that the canter is any kind of evasion that's going to get him out of work. Remember, that's what horses are always looking for. They're looking for whatever it is they can do that is gonna get them out of doing the work. So what we're gonna find here by pushing him on a little in the canter, he's gonna find that that's no escape. So when I ask him to come back to the trot, and trot, he's ready to do that. Whereas if I had tried to pull him down to the trot right away as soon as he started cantering, I probably would have had a little fight on my hand. Yeah, now we see him stretching deeper into it. It's nice to see him getting to that phase where, as I said, when I started this horse, he was very excitable, you know, and he would run around for quite a while. Now he's coming down, you can see him already wanting to stop. He's understanding if I do the right thing now, then I might get this up. Uh, yeah. We're hearing blowing out that tells us the rib cage is relaxing, the breathing is getting better. I like that. Notice every time he hollows a little bit, I just bring him in just a little bit and push him out with my whip. So I re-engage his hind quarter. Just like if I were riding, I want to ride from the back to the front. Well, I want to lunge from the back to the front. That's why all these devices that try to strap the horse's head down in any way, neck stretching devices, over-tightened side reins, uh, the gogs, anything that's trying to artificially place the neck instead of trying to work the horse from the back, the back will ultimately have some kind of uh, bad effect on the horse, so to speak. There we go. So now we see he'll go around the whole circle. He'll stretch into that contact, which tells me he's starting to get into the zone. He's not resisting anymore. He's not looking for a way out of the work, but he's starting to relax, and he's found out how he can work comfortably so the work is not so difficult for him any longer. Just like that. Beautiful. And we can go all the way around the circle. If you if you compare even this video to an earlier one I did of him lunging, and just look at his eye, and look how relaxed his eye is in this now, compared to what it was before. Yeah, coming out and blowing nicely. Very nice, stretching the whole length of his neck now. Excellent, like that. Good. 
Now we can get the stride to swing a little bit more. Now he's nice and relaxed. We'll get a little bigger stride out of him. Still in the stretch. He's really working over his back. Look how relaxed the underside of the neck muscles are now. Look how you can see the top line lighting up. A nice swinging drop that's slow and deep. how what had taken four weeks ago, what it had taken an hour just to get him to begin to stretch down, but not even completely relax. We see now this maybe took uh, 10 minutes at the most. I'm not sure exactly here, but maybe 10 minutes at the most. We could see he stayed relaxed the whole time. Within a few moments, he got in the zone, stretched into the contact. You could see how relaxed his eye, are, what his eye was and how beginning to swing through from behind he was in the end there. He was starting to really stretch. You could see his whole top line working. And we see that that only took a few moments. So once again, I want to warn you about the danger thing of lunging. It became popular in the last few years, you know, for veterinarians to even tell people that lunging would damage their horses. Well, that's true. Bad lunging will damage your horse. But correct lunging, where the time that you're spending lunging is less and less and less, where you're never just running around a horse like a wild lunatic, but it's becoming less and less and he gets over his top line, this kind of lunging will never hurt a horse and uh, we'll only improve them and you can see that the time becomes shorter and shorter. That's how you know your lunging is correct. So once again, this is Will Faber from Art to Ride with Bailador here and explaining to you and showing you the second phase of lunging. Thank you very much and we'll see you next time.